Hey, I'm Tom McIntosh and this is The Chord Crafter. This instrument was something I made as part of my degree in music technology. Uh, we had a class that required us to make an instrument of any kind, basically. Um, and so I created this. Uh, this is something I've been thinking about for a while and I really wish it existed as like a commercial product. Um, but basically it's a circle of fifths layout uh, that allows you to play chords with a single touch. So as opposed to a traditional keyboard layout, you have to know, you know how to play every chord. Um, this presents you with a whole bunch of chords right in front of you. So the main layout is a, a major chords on the outside, minor chords on the inside, and then you have some modifiers to add a ninth and a seventh, and you can also go up or down an inversion. So on the inside is a teensy microcontroller connected to a whole bunch of momentary switches. And there's some code in the microcontroller, which when it receives a button press, will send out a MIDI signal. Um, the great thing about the Teensy is that it's a class compliant MIDI device, so you can plug it into anything and this will show up as a like a MIDI keyboard. Um, but obviously you need uh, the specific software to make it actually play chords. So this is where pure data comes into it. We're gonna receive these control values and then we can do whatever we want. In this case, we're gonna play chords and they correspond to the ones we've labeled on the device. And so let's have a look at the PD side of things. So if you've never seen Pure Data before, you might be a little bit freaked out, but it's essentially just a visual programming language where you can connect objects together. Um, so here's a CTL in object or control in, which allows us to receive uh, MIDI values in. So we would select our MIDI device over here, and then we can choose the channel and then which MIDI control parameter. So this is a little bit of scaling to make sure it is uh, the right range. And this is the graphical user interface um, that I would see when I'm performing. So it's mainly just feedback um, for what I'm doing with the controller to make sure it's still working and to see what's happening. You can see this represents the um, inversion up and down buttons. This is the speed for looping uh, through the inversions and a couple of options like whether to re-trigger the octave. So you can see here we're receiving in the data from the chord crafter. We're selecting some control values in, um, selecting when they're at 127, which means when it's been completely depressed, and that will trigger a message to this. This is called a bang, and this allows us to distribute a message further. So when this bang is triggered by a button being pressed on the chord crafter, we will send to G1, B, O, and D1. What does that mean? Uh, well, each send has a corresponding receive. It can have multiple receives as well, I believe. Uh, but they're over here. So we're going to send G1 is receive G1. And basically, this is going to play um, this specific frequency is sent into this poly object. This is a little bit complicated, but it allows us to uh, pack together uh, multiple pieces of data. Um, and this will get sent off to the synthesis section. So all this is about um, managing which notes are being played. And you can see we also have the seventh and the ninth. So these frequencies are also um, hard coded in, but um, the reason I've done it like that is so that I can multiply them later to go up and down the octaves. So if we head over to the synth engine, so the synth engine is where we receive these frequencies to actually synthesize them into sound. We can see we have three sends here, F1, F2, F3 back over here they're received and one of them triggers another um, send called chord press and that i believe is used somewhere else um, to trigger the envelope of the sound so here you can see we multiply the frequency that's received by the current octave which allows us you know to go basically to infinity or outside the range of human hearing and we can also have a multiplier for inversions so back down here, we have a throw, which allows us to route audio around pure data. I believe that's sent to the ADSR. And this is gonna shape the sound uh, so that you know it's not always on or always off. Then after the ADSR stage, we have a final throw, which will go back to the GUI. And it's made up by a catch of the same name. And here's where the final sound shaping takes place before it goes to the DAC or the digital to analog converter which is the output. So obviously this is not the prettiest or the slimmest design in the world, but it is functional. Um, but with a bit of CAD modeling, I've been messing around with some ideas for a version two uh, with some force sensitive pads like you might find on an Ableton push or a launch pad. And with more options for adding, you know, instead of just a seventh and a ninth, you can add 
all 12 degrees of the current chord uh, with your plus and minus buttons there. So this is just a, um, a rough 3D print of a couple of layers, but that might be a project that has to wait for another day. So I hope you enjoyed checking out the Chord Craft. It was really fun to make and it's still a really fun tool to use today. Um, I'm gonna upload the Pure Data patch so you can find that in the description so you can tinker around with it yourself. You obviously don't need this specific device to run the Pure Data patch. You just need the software and anyone can open it up and you can even attach it to a normal MIDI keyboard. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'm gonna try and document more projects like this in the future.